Hello everybody, welcome to another Wardy's Waffle Farm update. Happy Easter to you all, hope you're managing to have some time off with your friends and family uh, this, uh, this weekend. I just wanted to start this update with a tribute to the most incredible person, and that is Lord Henry Plum, who died this last week, aged 97. If you've not heard of him or don't know him, please Google him, because he is the most incredible person I have had the pleasure of meeting. And really, there are no words good enough to describe him. He was a past president of the NFU, and I think he was president when we joined the uh, EU. He was a member of the EU Parliament in the late 80s and a most distinguished member of the House of Lords. And he started the Henry Plum Foundation, which gave people uh, a leg up and a help who wanted to get into uh, the industry. I met him many times and he was hugely supportive of Forage Aid and he gave me some great advice when I, when I set that up. And he was one of farming's most loyal and incredible advocates. He had time for everyone, no matter what he was doing, and he was hugely inspirational to so many people. And I think the word gentleman just sums him up perfectly and the word would be invented for him. He was the most incredible human being. So rest in peace, Lord Henry. Your legacy will never be forgotten. So on to this week's update. We start by uh, looking at us trying to remove the compaction from the uh, demo field where we had all the drills running last week and uh, where all the vehicles were driving, which was a bit of a job and it didn't go too well, but you'll see that shortly. And we also had a demo with the horse sprinter drill that you saw in the yard last week, and that's on our long-term cover crop uh, trial field. We also take delivery of a new Bailey trailer and we're loading out oilseed rape from the store that uh, we store for ADM and we plant the rest of the spring barley on the demo field as well with our, our free flow drill. And we roll the field and we roll some more spring barley. So hope you enjoy this week's update. Thank you very much for watching and here we go. So I'm in the field now where we had our direct drilling day and we've got quite a lot of compaction on these headlands and a lot of uh, areas you can see here, this is the soil. We've got a lot of wheelings and uh, um, yeah, compaction really and damage on this headland. So we are trying to rectify it, but it won't be able to rectify it properly because it's not dry enough underneath. We've got our low disturbance uh, subsoiler on here that we put oilseed rape in. So let's try and keep out the wind. It's still very windy at the minute. We've got a low disturbance subsoiler here and uh, trying to get this uh, alleviated so we can get it put in with, with barley. Yeah, I'm not happy with this at all. That is not really good. This is the tram line up and down the field where everybody was running. And if you just look at that, look there, look, it's just solid. There's no loose soil there at all. And the problem is this tine has just sliced through that without lifting it and shattering it. And it's, uh, it's not good at all, really. I don't think that will drill very well. It somehow wants loosening up a bit more all in there. It's, it's just still, it's still too solid. No, it's not good this isn't, not good at all. When you look at this here, expecting to get a crop out of this. So we're just getting this sprinter calibrated ready. Really easy, the bag just slips under like that.
So, Gareth, you were saying it's twin hoppers split 60 40. The rear hopper's 60, that the front hopper's 40%. We're just drilling out the front hopper today. But yeah. Put your, your full seed hopper, which I think was just over a ton. ton yeah, yeah, yeah. There. So, we've put a ton of. Uh, ton of seed in this front hopper and we'll just switch the back hopper off for today right. if you wanted to um say you're doing winter wheat and you wanted to maximize capacity you could put seed in both hoppers and just move the little diverters there to divert all the products down one oh tower. this little lever there on that that's that. it yeah ah, and then that's uh, good. the seed would then come out at, at the five inch yeah. dutch opener to, to, to form the band what's the what's the, is that magic eye uh, what what that is? It's just a low sensor. level sensor. Ah, oh, so low got, sensor, right? That's going to say when we've run out of seed. And yeah. There's one more further up to warn us when we're getting low. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Good. And then looking at the at the coulters, these are what are they? Five inch? These are, they? are five inch Dutch Industries. You'll see that pipe's not connected to the fertilizer out the, at the back. Yeah. That's just because there's another type of coulter going on here, right. which doesn't require that that length of pipe. So for this demonstration, we've got all the product running down there. Uh, the back of the five inch and it's a five inch open back coulter yeah um, in the last few years we've quite seen quite a few people change the coulters on sprinters so common options would be dutch industries borgo or metcalf right they're um, the three they're the, yeah. they're the most common yeah. three yeah. and then you have these discs on here just to stop the, to keep the throw stop it going too far that's it just and on this machine it's just on the on the rear row yeah so you've got an element of leveling from the second row to the first and yeah. the third to the second yeah but we don't want too much soil throw at the right. rear row of filters and then we've got the double row of harrows which we can adjust for depth and rake adjustment and then the, the rear tire packer and, and following harrow so you've got plenty of tines in there to actually level it after the seed's gone in yes. and all the wood. Yeah, it's good yeah. that is. Yeah, yeah, it's good. And where we had to go direct drilling with it in, in the field, obviously it was, it was hard, it's hard. You're able to direct drill and cover crops and things with this with this coulter? Yes, I mean, a taller cover crop, we, we've seen people we've seen people direct drilling into cover crops. Um, if you were going into a really tall cover crop, I would say um, the avatar would always be the, the one with yeah. the drag in. You know, your meter yeah. cover crops so you don't get any dragging around the tines. Yeah. But I've seen quite a lot of people into into shorter cover crops and the, right. the, the trash flows good. Useful feature is that platform folds down when you have a seed and fertilizer hopper. So the wing can fold up neatly. There we go, it's all folded in down the side. There we are, nothing damaged, really compact. That's it, ready for road. We're now drilling the field that we've been on our long-term cover crop trial, eight years, direct drilling. We're trying a horse sprinter now. We didn't have this running last week on our drilling day. Just see why we reluctant to get rid of this drill but if this was a growing cover crop this wood drill wouldn't be running that one would makes it a lot handier having the hoppers here putting seed in when it's windy like this really good platform that is on that drill VIP delivery, Michael Bailey himself, I think, on the tractor, bringing our latest pupil carrier. We've got this, uh, the three of us share this, Bailey's, uh, Agri and ourselves have all put input into this. Yep, that's 
Sam. Right, come on here. You're on candid camera. Oh dear. You're right. Bad mate, thank you. Right, you better just give us a, a, a two minute walk around this. Any changes from the last one? No, great deal, no, no one. Um... No. No, it doesn't look to be. Very, very similar, same thing. Is that lower? There's... Only because you're off the thing. Right. It will be. Oh, so we've got little zips up here that lift this up. And they fold up if we need. Yeah, that's good. Nice handrails. Room at the front in this one for a wheelchair. Yeah. Some wheelchair access. If not, I'm going to say you've got more room there than the last one. If not, that seat drops. Yeah. To make up your numbers. All your lap belts are in, cushion seats. And this holds still 39. Five at the back. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 2 is 34, and, and 5 is 39, that's it, well, and this is your piece just here, this is where the Lord Mayor stands, checking out all his orders, <laughs> oh is it, it's not big enough for me, have you got a <laughs> microphone, <laughs> and you've got all lights and beacon, hmm. so uh, if anybody wants one of these, this is the people to ask, Michael will sort you, look at that, and then these all roll up. So these sides unzip here. So in good weather, you can lift these up, roll up and get the fresh air coming through and look out. So we're gonna be using this for the school visits we're doing. Got a few schools visiting, young farmers clubs coming as well. So we're gonna be using this for touring around the farm. We've got some more oil seed drape going out of store starting today and all next week. Unfortunately, it's not our oilseed rate. It belongs the merchant ADM. There was 2,700 tonnes in here, uh, which at today's value is approximately 1.9 million pounds. So yes, huge money, as I say, pity it's not ours. Uh, we got the panels, uh, the concrete panels out of this doorway uh, there and here a few weeks ago so we're now starting to go back so we've got uh, approximately 550 tons going next week and then uh, the week after some more and when you look at it here the white bits here as the remnants of the pods there's a few weed seeds in there the round uh, sort of brownie things are uh, cleaver seeds but there's a few pods um, in here and there's some poppy seeds as well there I see um, but the black obviously when it's crushed is where the oil comes from and I'll just move out the way of the shed the bucket on this Manitou with oil seed rape it'll hold just over two tons of rape 2.2 tons probably Whereas with wheat, it's about 2.7 tonnes. And this bucket has actually, we've had it now, I think this is the second, if not maybe even the third Manitou that we've uh, used it for. We only use it for grain, this bucket, nothing else, and uh, keep it clean and dry and everything in the shed. sides or the rest of the drill demo field and it's rough so I've just had to go to the neighbours to get a bit of seed because we're running out and looking across here you can see how hard and solid it is this is the edge of the field where all the vehicles were running in running down you can see there it's just solid so we're going to drill in that it has had the Alita through it you saw earlier a few minutes ago in this video it's solid so we're just putting on up the seed rate to nearly 500 seeds a square meter 
here. So 244 kilos a hectare. That's all right, that's quite good. A little bit of seed there. But generally, it's good. Not many drills have put the seed in when it's as hard and dry as this. So we're just lowering the tines a bit on the front here to put them in a bit deeper. Put some nose holes so those front tines in a bit, and then it will save these because these can snap if they're in too hard a ground. I'm just going to run round in the Manitou next to um, next to uh, the drill because it's really windy, so you can hear me. We're drilling straight into that. Tom is going slow because we don't want the shear bolts to snap on those front tines or the colder points. That is remarkable what it's doing there. You can see that one. The angle of that time. You can see now why they do snap. Remarkable really when you look at that. I mean look at that, it is just absolutely solid. And then look at that, drilling there, no seed out on top anywhere. Just shows you how hard this ground is when you look at this Manitou. I don't know what these forklifts weigh. Is it eight or nine tons? I don't know, but when you look at that not marking that soil at all there look at that not printing it at all and yet the drill there doing a really good job Makes you wonder what are we looking at other drills for. Ruben's just finishing off rolling the spring barleys that these were drilled about a week ago. And you can just see rolls are 12 meters wide so that's about 40 feet for those of you who want it in imperial size good rolls but uh, there's much need to do in this time of year with the rolls when we do all of the fields that we plant we do them for two or three reasons help with the germination of the seed that's in there and also 
to um, help the herbicides that we put on the crop here. See there's a bit of moisture underneath there. There's the seed. We might just have a yes yeah, just we need to be careful here. There's just a chit on that one. You can just see there. That's chitted. And rolling it, you just need to be very careful to lose that. Look at that. Heck of a chit on that. So we just need to be careful. But they are drilled quite deep. We always do drill all our crops into moisture and to keep them out of the way of slugs. But with the wind and the rain the last week, we haven't had a chance to to uh, to do uh, finish this rolling or even put the herbicides on. So thanks very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed that update. Uh, please click like, subscribe and the bell sound to notify you of uh, when I post my videos, which I think the next one will be next Sunday. Got a busy week this week coming up. I've got two audits. I've got our task storage audit on Tuesday morning and I've actually got the red tractor audit in the afternoon. So uh, that will be a, a big day for me, I think, and I'll probably need a glass of Merlot uh, Tuesday evening. So until next week, cheerio.